Well, hi there. I'm here today with one of the coolest lizards in the world, and that is the Rhinoceros Iguana. This particular Rhinoceros Iguana comes to us from Great Basin Serpentarium, and they are one of the great breeders out there. In fact, I recommend them for everything that they produce. You should definitely go check out their website. We'll have a link to that down in our description. But I am so excited for this opportunity to be here with this animal because rhinoceros iguanas are incredible. I mean, look at them. For, for starters, they're not named rhinoceros iguanas for no reason. Rhinoceri are actually very lizard-looking mammals. And these guys have got a horn on their nose and the general head shape and coloration and scaliness of a rhinoceros. I mean, they they really are very similar looking animals. And rhinoceros probably just means horn on nose. So they are rhinoceroses even in the absence of the mammal rhinoceros. I love these guys and they can be really interesting pet reptiles, but I definitely don't think that they are for everyone. I told you a long time ago we did a video on the green iguana, and uh, many of you noticed that I looked fairly nervous in that video, and that was largely because I was extremely nervous in that video. Uh, part of the reason that I get so nervous filming iguanas like this is um, because I am trapped in here. Uh, it takes me longer than it would take for an iguana to latch onto me to get out of this chair. So if they decide to turn on me, there's not much I can do about it. The other thing is, iguanas have got some really impressive weapons, and uh, the rhinoceros iguana is no exception. They're actually probably a little less inclined to whip you with their tail than our green iguanas, actually probably much less inclined, and that was actually the thing I was the most concerned about with the green iguana. They've still got very sharp, brutal claws. They don't tend to use those as weapons, but if you pick one up and hold it, you'll, you will be very familiar with those claws. Uh, the business end, though, of a rhinoceros iguana would be the mouth. These guys have got some serious teeth and, and pretty substantial jaw pressure, and they can inflict horrific bites. And, and these guys, the rhinoceros iguanas, are just as formidable as are the green iguanas when it comes to that. I think, generally speaking, uh, they've got a much better attitude, but that actually can lull you into a false sense of security, which we will discuss here in just a moment. Overall, we give the rhinoceros iguana a score of 2.6 out of 5, which is actually the exact same score that we gave to green iguanas. They do earn that score for different reasons, and, and we'll go over what those reasons are. Generally speaking, I do think these are better pets than green iguanas, but they are definitely not for everyone. And, and to explain why they get that score, we've broken this down into our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's start with handleability. When it comes to handleability, we give the rhinoceros iguana a score of two out of five. In a lot of ways, they're very similar to handle to a tegu, which I think is one of the best big lizards you could possibly handle, at least when it comes to the Argentine tegus. As a big lizard, they can hurt you even when they're not being aggressive or defensive in any way. Those claws can tear you up, and uh, tegus can do that to you too. It's probably worse though with iguanas because they climb a little bit more, so the claws are a little bit sharper. and. Uh, once you pick one up, you'll know all about it. I think I think with big lizards, you know, picking them up and handling them, that's kind of not the best way to interact with them. Generally, you interact with them on the ground a little bit more like you would with a dog. You can pick it up, but most of the time you don't. The main difference, I would say, between handling a rhinoceros iguana and handling a tegu is just what will happen if and when it bites you. Um, both a tegu or a rhinoceros iguana can bite you. Neither of them are going to do it regularly, but it is a possibility and maybe a slightly stronger possibility with a rhinoceros iguana than it is with a tegu. Why this is, is of major concern with an iguana more so than a tegu comes down to the teeth. 
Tegus, especially when they're big enough to do you some real damage, have only got sharp teeth in the very front of their mouth, and most of their teeth are actually big and blunt and for crushing. And that will hurt, but it's not going to, like, cut your fingers off. Uh, Rhinoceros iguana, on the other hand, has got very, very sharp teeth for tearing leaves, and they can tear a lot more than that with those teeth. So that is something to be aware of, and something, because most of the time they are very mild-mannered, it can be easy to forget that those teeth are there. As I said before, they're not nearly as likely to whip you with their tail as our green iguanas. Uh, but that bite is really nasty. And, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about being bitten by this iguana, and they get much larger than this. So, by the time they're fully grown, which takes a long time, these are a very long-lived lizard, they grow slowly, and they get huge. And a huge one, uh, if, if it decides to bite you, it's going to be heinous. When it comes to care, we give the rhinoceros iguana a score of 3 out of 5. A lot of that is going to come down to just the size of a lizard that this is and what it eats. These guys are vegetarians, which on, on its face sounds really nice because all you have to do is get veggies. It's just veggies are actually really expensive when you have to buy them in massive quantities. And that is exactly what you have to do when you have a rhinoceros iguana. You need fresh veggies all the time, a wide variety of different veggies, and uh, that, that adds up. In the wild, they eat trace amounts of protein. I mean, tiny, tiny little bits of protein every now and then. And and one big mistake that people uh, run into is they, they offer them way too much, way too much animal protein. And so you want to keep that to an extremely limited amount, almost a purely vegetarian diet for these guys. When it comes to their enclosure, because this is a colossal lizard, the enclosure needs to be huge, absolutely enormous. Ground space is going to be really important for them, but also vertical space matters as well. And so give them places to climb, but mostly places to run around. These are a more terrestrial iguana than our green iguanas. And that enclosure, you're going to have to build it, probably yourself. If you have to commission somebody else to do it, you're going to pay a lot of money for that enclosure. So just be aware of that before you get yourself into one of these guys. You're gonna need a substrate that'll maintain high humidity levels, uh, that, that won't rot, and you're gonna need quite a lot of that. Uh, you're also gonna need a, a water bowl big enough for a giant iguana to soak in it, so keep in mind that's gonna be large. And the biggest thing are gonna be their basking lights. You're gonna need really good UVA heat lights and UVB basking lights. They need it pretty hot, and they need a lot of UV, and this is an enormous lizard. So, you're going to need a lot of lights. When it comes to hardiness, we give the rhinoceros iguana a score of 4 out of 5. If they are set up properly, they're actually pretty amazing. But this is rarely the case. Uh, people usually get them as babies, and they just aren't planning for the future. A baby iguana is easy to feed and easy to house and that will quickly change, and people don't change with it. Probably the most successful you'll be is if you live in a place where these guys can live year-round outdoors, which most places that's not possible. But that is probably the best situation if you're wanting to keep a rhinoceros iguana. One wonderful thing about these guys, though, is all of them that are available legally are captive bred. And that is better for so many reasons, and it definitely increases the likelihood that your iguana will make it. So if you provide the right care, they should do great. Just realize that most people, they don't know what they're getting themselves into. This is a huge lizard that lives an extremely long time. So you will be doing this care for a big lizard for decades. When it comes to availability, we give the rhinoceros iguana a score of 2 out of 5. Definitely your best bet is going to be to go straight to a breeder. And, and there are quite a few, well not a, quite a few, but there are a number of breeders that uh, are able to house Rhinoceros iguanas outdoors year-round, and they have a lot of success breeding iguanas. So they are available in North America. I would recommend just contacting one of them. They'll very rarely be available also at expos, uh, extremely rarely in pet shops, things like that. But honestly, the rhinoceros iguana is not something that you're going to buy just because you happen to stumble into one. This is a serious commitment and a serious lizard. So you're only probably going to get one if this is something you've researched heavily and you've found a good breeder. 
When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Rhinoceros Iguan a score of 2 out of 5. The lizard itself is very expensive. And, I mean, honestly, for how long it's going to live and how incredibly large it's going to get, uh, like pound for pound or year for year, they're not very expensive. But that upfront cost is high when it comes to just the lizard. On top of that, you need an enormous custom-built enclosure, which will not be cheap at all. I would recommend getting substrate probably from the hardware store. You don't need super deep substrate. They're not diggers like Tegu's. But... You're going to need a lot of it because your enclosure is colossal. They're definitely going to need some large branches and large hides, you know, for a really big lizard to climb on and hide in. You're going to need a colossal water bowl that they can soak in. Uh, the lights for these guys are going to cost a ton right up front. And remember, with those UV bulbs, you're going to need to replace them every six months to a year, depending on the type you get. So that's an ongoing cost. And then this doesn't factor into the upfront costs. But remember, these guys cost a lot to feed, and you'll be feeding them for a very, very, very long time. I mean, when you get a rhinoceros iguana, you'll be feeding it longer than you'll be feeding your children. And for these reasons, we give the rhinoceros iguana a score of 2.6 out of 5. Honestly, I love these guys, right? They are so cool. One of the coolest looking lizards in the world. They've got great personalities. Honestly, they're just marvelous, unless they're not. And, you know, the day that it goes awry, it goes really awry. On top of that, they're just extremely expensive to keep for an, a very, very long time, which is a great thing, but it's also a major, major commitment. These are certainly not something you'd want to buy on an impulse. They're not the large lizard that I would recommend the most strongly. I mean, they're not even probably super high on that list. I wish, I wish things were a little bit different if these guys uh, had the care and personality of Tegus, but with the looks of a rhinoceros iguana, I would recommend them all day long. If you are in the market for a great large lizard, I, I strongly recommend that you check out our video on Argentine Tegus. Otherwise, uh, if you've decided that this is probably not the lizard for you, which for most people I would say that is the case, We've got lists upon lists of totally rad lizards and other reptiles and now amphibians that you should definitely check out. So, so don't miss those. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. Also, thank you to our patrons at Patreon. It is just so much more intense in two ways. One way is I'm trapped back here. Thing number two, I can't even be watching them the whole time. It gets easy to read an animal when you're looking at it. Out of your peripherals. Hey, you. Yeah, you're a good dude. Overall, we give the rhinoceros iguana some score, which yeah, has not been totaled. I, I was going to put it in. Probably. Because most of the time they are very mild mannered. It can be easy to forget that those teeth are there until they remind you absolutely that those teeth... <laughs> hey, bud. Do you breed these guys? But, I mean, you're drying just in isolation. If he somehow manages to pop out some eggs, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> but without outdoor facilities, no. Nah, until we move, no. Nah. You'd like it when you stroke the horn. Why'd you wait so long to tell me that? That's what you like? I could have done that for you all day. You're a good iguana. Now that I know your spot, I think you were trying to communicate it to me.